Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're gonna to talk about something a little different, AG1. AG1 has gotten so much press lately, and full disclosure, AG1 sent a one month supply to my husband, so I thought I would do a deep dive into some of its ingredients and tell you guys what I think about it. So I'm gonna do a multi-part series and divide it up into different aspects of the powder and talk about each one separately. So let's dig in. Today, we're gonna to specifically talk about the fat soluble vitamins that are in AG1. Fat soluble vitamins are a little bit different than most other vitamins because they can't be eliminated by the body. Meaning that if you have an excess amount of fat soluble vitamins, that can be a problem. The fat soluble vitamins include vitamins A, D, E, and K. So let's go through each of those, talk about how much the AG1 powder has in it of each of these and what I think about that. Okay, so first off is vitamin A. AG1 claims that, quote, vitamin A or beta carotene is a powerful vitamin that helps to protect skin from the damaging effects of UV radiation from the sun and promotes skin cell renewal. Okay, so the form of vitamin A that they have in their powder is the form of beta carotene. And AG1 contains 62% of the recommended daily value of the beta carotene. The recommended daily values that they have on their product are for men greater than the age of 19. So that would mean that usually the recommended daily values for women are a little bit lower. The great news about beta carotene is that this form of vitamin A is really unlikely to cause toxicity because it is the preform from plants and it's metabolized and regulated by the body. So if the body doesn't need more vitamin A, it won't transform the beta carotene into vitamin A. Large amount of beta carotene can cause keratinemia, especially in babies. So if you've given your babies lots of pureed carrots, you may have noticed that their skin got a little bit of an orangish hue. That actually happened to my daughter, and it was kind of funny to see. Vitamin A is a known antioxidant, but the forms that treat skin issues, you've probably heard of products like Retin-A or Accutane. These are actually synthetic or man-made versions of vitamin A that are either taken orally or used topically for the skin. Overall, I think their claim is a little bit misleading about the skin effects of vitamin A. Yes, the liver does produce a very small amount of isotretinoin, but I'm not sure taking more beta carotene version of vitamin A will contribute to that. Overall, I am glad that the form of vitamin A that they put in their product is beta carotene, so it's really hard to take too much of that. Okay, next up is vitamin D. Interestingly enough, vitamin D is not in their powdered product. They have a separate liquid version that comes in this little dropper. The liquid is combined with vitamin K, so it's a vitamin D, vitamin K combination. One drop of the liquid has 1,000 international units of vitamin D3, which is 125% of the recommended daily value. Personally, I really like vitamin D supplementation. I do not think Americans get enough vitamin D all in all. The most common way that we get vitamin D is through skin exposure to sunlight without sunscreen on or through fortified dairy products, like especially milk. And as Americans use more sunscreen and drink less milk, we're, I'm just seeing more vitamin D deficiency quite a bit. I also think the recommendations for how much vitamin D to take are incredibly confusing. That could be an entirely different video. On average, I usually recommend patients take between 400 international units to 5,000 international units, depending on how old they are, whether they're male or female, and what sort of diet they have. It's also really, really difficult to take too much vitamin D. It's been known to happen, but people usually are taking mega, mega doses of vitamin D. Overall, my verdict about this is that I really appreciate that they are giving a vitamin D supplement, although I'm a little annoyed that it's not just included in the powder. The next fat soluble vitamin is vitamin E. AG1 claims that, quote, vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant 
that is involved in every step of the immune system working to defend ourselves from environmental damage. So AG1 has 83 milligrams of vitamin E in the form of alpha tocopherol, which is 553% of the recommended daily value. So that made me pause a little bit because it's essentially about five times above the recommended daily value. You really shouldn't be taking more than 270 milligrams of vitamin A in the form of alpha tocopherol. Like I said, AG1 is far below that, but it's just something to keep in mind. Taking higher than 270 milligrams of the alpha tocopherol form of vitamin E has possibly been associated with an increased risk of mortality and an increased risk of prostate cancer. There have been some interesting studies on using vitamin E for the treatment of fatty liver disease and its improvement on liver enzymes and also on delaying the progression of macular degeneration, but it hasn't been shown to help prevent macular degeneration. It has not been shown to be beneficial in preventing cardiovascular disease or any types of cancer. High doses of alpha tocopherol form of vitamin E actually reduce another form of vitamin E called gamma tocopherol. So scientists wonder if that relationship may be why we don't see really, really beneficial effects when you take really high to high doses of vitamin E because when you take really high doses of alpha tocopherol, it reduces other forms of vitamin E that are in the body. So overall, my verdict on this is that I agree with the claims that it makes, but I don't, I think it's a little bit too high of a dose. I don't, I don't love that it's that high. Like I said, it's still well below the worrisome amount, but it's, it's still on the higher side for me. Okay, and last but not least is vitamin K. And as I mentioned previously, vitamin D and vitamin K are in the liquid form that you take. And AG1 claims that, quote, it helps to regulate calcium in the body to support bone health and aids in nervous system function. One drop of the liquid supplement contains 100 micrograms of vitamin K, which is about 83% of the recommended daily value. Vitamin K deficiency and toxicity are really rare in healthy adults, especially in places like America. And the way I'm most used to hearing about vitamin K is its association with our coagulation system or our blood clotting system in the blood. But vitamin K is also shown to help with bone formation. And so I think that's probably why they pair vitamin D and vitamin K together. I didn't really find much about vitamin K's role in the nervous system. I think we just don't know a whole lot. So all in all, my verdict is that I do agree with the claim, but as I mentioned before, I'm annoyed that the vitamin K is not just included in the powder for simplicity's sake. Okay, so that ends my first part of AG1 powder and AG1 liquid, where I specifically talked about fat-soluble vitamins. Next up, I'm gonna talk about some water-soluble vitamins that are in AG1 and some of the things that I have concerns about and some of the things that I like. Continue to watch as I continue to delve into more about AG1. Thanks for joining me.